Okay, we're back, and this time we're going to look at an RC circuit, a resistor capacitor circuit, where um, the battery's been disconnected, and uh, therefore the capacitor is going to discharge. So uh, keep in mind, you know, when, when you talk about RC circuits, why would a capacitor charge up in the first place? Well, it's because of a battery. The battery produces an electric field through the wires, pushes electrons around, and those electrons um, start to collect on one of the surfaces of the capacitor. The other surface becomes positively charged um, as the electrons leave it and flow you know, through the wires as current. So capacitors, you know, they're doing two things. They store charge and they store energy. And when you take the battery away, uh, there, there's nothing to keep the charges stored up on the capacitor any anymore. Uh, think of those electrons, for example. They're, they're all very close together. There's a whole bunch of them. They're all repelling each other. And if at all possible, they, they want to get away from each other. So when you take the battery away, those things are going to escape back through the wires. And that's the discharge. The capacitor uses the stored energy in order to do all this. Um, energy is conserved. So you could ask, you know, where does that energy go? Well, it's going to get burned off in the resistor or whatever resistance you have in the circuit. And as we're going to find out in our derivation here, this all happens exponentially in time. So, yep, pretty simple circuit diagram. Uh, when you close the switch, that starts the clock, and with no battery again, um, it, it, these charges are going to leave the capacitor. So, for any circuit, uh, you know, th this Kirchhoff's voltage rule, because we have a series circuit, um, the voltage rule is what, what applies. Um, there is no battery. I'm just going to put a zero there. And then we have a, a resistor and a capacitor. From Ohm's law, we know how to find the voltage for a resistor. And then charge divided by capacitance is our, our voltage for the capacitor. So that, that's what our equation looks like for this circuit. Uh, we want time, so we make use of our definition of what current is in the first place. It, it's the rate of change of, of charge moving through the wires. So when you substitute that, um, this is where you get your differential equation and where we basically have to start doing some math. Our job is to figure out um, what is the charge as a function of time. That's our goal. And we might as well, we could figure out what, what our current as a function of time is as well, once we get there. So whenever you have dif differential equations, you want to try, if at all possible, to separate the variables. So I'm going to isolate the derivative. Okay, that means I have to move this over C term to the other side, and I'll divide through by R. Okay, That's all it turns out to be. And this one isn't so bad. We can separate the variables pretty quickly if we just bring divide by, by Q, divide by the charge, and then we can bring that DT, that, that time differential, up on the right-hand side. We have a negative constant multiplied by DT over there. Well, when you separate variables, that's when you want to see if you can integrate. And uh, let's see, on the time side, on the right-hand side, um, when the switch closes, that starts the clock. And we'll let it run for however long you want. Now, corresponding to this, on the charge side, we do have some initial charge. Okay, at time equals zero. And then what we're really after is you want to find out no, what's our final charge after so much time has ticked away? Um, well, the right-hand side is pretty trivial. It's just going to be whatever our time period is over our C. And uh, also, it's not so bad on, on the left-hand side. It's going to be natural log of the charge. And we have to evaluate that from our initial to final charge. We can do that. Um,
All right, and then we can use our, since we're subtracting logs, we can use our algebra 2 rule. Write that as a, a ratio inside the natural log. And last but not least, we can write down the final answer. So I'm for a little q, but this really is our, our charge as a function of time. Um, oops. That's going to be our, whatever the initial charge is, we have to e both sides. So we get this exponential decay. Keep in mind this, this constant, rc, is called the time constant. And that determines how quickly or, or how slowly the capacitor discharges. So we have control over that. Um, if you were to graph this, the charge of your capacitor as a function of time, when you plug in time equals zero, it starts off at initial charge, which is good. That's our initial condition. As time gets big, our charge approaches zero exponentially. We could do one other quick thing here. If we take the derivative of this function, that'll be our current equation. Our current is a function of time. So we have our initial charge. Um, we derivatize an exponential, so we get a, a negative 1 over rc times our exponential. So this too, is, it also exponentially decays. Uh, we could clean this up and rewrite it a little bit. Um, initial charge divided by capacitance would be whatever the initial voltage of your capacitor is divided by resistance. That's cool, that's Ohm's law, that, that's current. And then we have our exponential. Also at the same time constant. So as our, our capacitor discharges, um, our current starts big and dies down as well over time. Okay, and with that, uh, yeah, th this is a, a discharging capacitor. Again, when you take away the battery, Capacitors can no longer hold the charge, and you get these exponential decays for both charge and current. Um, I hope this helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.